श्रीरीरितम कलमशापहम श्रवणमंगलम श्रीमदातम भुवि गृणती ए भूरिदाजना श्री राम कृष्ण ही इज कन्वर्सिंग विद द डिवोटीज एंड श्री मॉ मास्टर माशय ही इज गिविंग द अकाउंट ऑफ संडे डिसम्बर सिक्सटीन एटीन एटी थ्री श्री राम कृष्ण वॉज सीटेड विद एम ऑन द सेमी सर्कुलर पोस्ट ऑफ हिज रूम एट अबाउट टेन ओ क्लॉक इन द मॉर्निंग द फ्रेगरेंस ऑफ द flowers jasmine roses and other flowers filled the air the master was singing looking at him thou must save me sweetest mother unto thee i come for refuge helpless as a bird imprisoned in a cage immediately after this he went into that mood and he said but why why should i live like a bird imprisoned in a cage fy for shame he was suggesting himself so when we are singing the song the most of the time the idea of the composer or the singer it comes here the person who is sing a uh, mention that he has composed this song helpless as a bird imprisoned in a cage he mentioned in that so please come and help sri ramakrishna is just liking it and there is another song is a very famous song in a bengali kali kirtan and there it's also says that all my desires have not been fulfilled and this world cannot love me etc etc so oh god oh god is please help me like this so as a young boy i used to sing like that after the joining the order when some of the senior swamis they asked me do you know singing can you sing a song so in those days there was no tv of course and maybe a little bit of radio so obviously people themselves used to sing and that we entertain themselves they hear they asked me to sing and i was singing amar sadhana mitilo basuna purilo etc shakuli furai jaye ma in translation o mother goddess my life is coming to an end but all my desires are still there i could not fulfill those desires shami shantarupananda ji was there he was in cherapanji and he immediately told don't sing this song this is not for you some people may be having this idea maybe they are praying to god to fulfill all their desires but you have got all the desires you are free you don't have any desire except one the god realization isn't it i told you don't sing this song because moment you were singing that song and understanding the meaning of it naturally the impressions will be in your mind and the subconscious mind when that those things will be there automatically it will surface and make your character in that way so one should be so careful about the, even the thoughts Sri Ramakrishna is a great master, is a wonderful teacher, and he is the greatest guru. So he is always conscious when he is singing this this song. Naturally, the afterwards the people, his devotees, the followers, oh, Thakur has sang this song, so they will also sing. Most of the songs that Sri Ramakrishna sang and recorded in this book have already been sang and recorded by the singers. mostly so that's why he is very very cautious even in that 
one should not, in the subconscious mind also, there should not be any weakness. But why, why should I live like a bird imprisoned in a cage? Fie for shame. As the master said these words, he went into an ecstatic mood. His body became motionless. Tears streamed down from his cheeks. After a while, he said, Oh, mother, then he is teaching the right thing. How to pray, what to pray to God? He is praying. Oh, mother, make me like Sheeta, completely forget, for, forgetful of everything, body and limbs, totally unconscious of hands, feet, sense organs, only the one thought in her mind, where is Rama? So that should be the prayer, that should be the attitude. And that is called the aspirants. They're trying to realize God, understanding God. So obviously, this thing should not be there. Was the master inspired by the ideal of Sita to teach him? Master Moshe himself, he doesn't know what other thoughts are going on in the minds of the others. Otherwise, the people are thinking. He himself was thinking in this way, is this for me? How to, because Sira, just we have read in the last class, that he was inspiring him, teaching him to be attentive. And here, just like the Sita, forgetting everything, and only one thought, that is where is Rama, the yearning that a devotee should feel for God. Sita's very life was centered in Rama, completely absorbed in the thought of Rama. Sita forgot even the body, which is so dear to all. So when people think that I am going to realize God, these are the teachings. Are you ready? Here, at four o'clock in the afternoon, Mr. Mukherjee, a relative of Prana Krishna, those who has read the biography of Sri Ramakrishna, they know about these people. Prana Krishna was very close to Sri Ramakrishna. He used to come again and again. He was a rich man, but he used to come to Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna used to teach him in a different way. And this gentleman, Mr. Bukharji, has come, he is his relative. In the company of a Brahmin, well versed in the scriptures. So in those days, people used to read a lot of scriptures, particularly Bhagavad Gita and all that. And they used to visit the holy people. When they came to Sri Ramakrishna, they, this Mr. Mukherjee, he also, maybe that Master Mahasaya was not knowing his name. That's why he didn't mention that. And he only mentioned the the last name, Mukherjee, and he is telling like this, Mukherjee, I am very happy to meet you, sir, the usual courtesy. Immediately, Sri Ramakrishna's reply, that is the uniqueness of Sri Ramakrishna, not even a single moment he is unaware. Immediately, his God dwells in all beings. He never spent any, even a single word unnecessarily. Immediately he said, you are coming to me? No, you are coming to God. Then you see the next line, God dwells in all being. He is the gold in all. In some places it is more clearly manifest than in others. I have I am happy to see you, sir, meet you, sir. Immediately say, God dwells in every being. But in some places, the manifestation is more. So, maybe that within me, the manifestation is so humble. Sri Ramakrishna is not telling good that you have come. Uh, I bless you, never. So that humbleness, he is telling it is good that you have come, but God dwells in every being. And in some places, the manifestation is more than others. God dwells in the worldly-minded, no doubt. But 
he is hidden there like the gold under deep layers of the clay. The gold is there in uh, maybe in, in every being. That means the, the Swami Vivekananda said each soul is potentially divine. And the goal is to manifest divinity within. So when I was coming back from Dallas, Texas, the one lady was sitting just by my side and she was reading a lot, maybe the storybook, I don't know. And I was reading a philosophical book on Vedanta. Perhaps she noticed. Because two hours flight, what to do? And only one cup of black coffee they will supply and nothing nothing else so okay so we were reading that and she noticed and then said what is this etc etc then I told her it is Vedanta and Vedanta what is Vedanta I told her it is Hinduism actually but here she has heard the name Hinduism the word Hinduism and not very clear idea about the Hindus so what is this Hinduism I told it is Vedanta that I am studying and in one word Vedanta is each soul is potentially divine. That's all. That is Vedanta. Veda Anta, the knowledge of the whole Veda is only half a sentence. Each soul is potentially divine. Here also Swami Vivekananda is mentioning that and he is telling the goal is to manifest the divinity within. What should be the goal of every human being? Only to manifest that which is there within, that divinity. So Sri Ramakrishna is also mentioning this and then he said, Mukherjee is telling, Sir, what is the difference between worldly and otherworldly things? So, whoever comes to me, I say always read gospel. Why? Because so many varieties of questions and the wonderful answers, you will have a clear idea about the spirituality, religion and spirituality. And then, of course, the other books. So this Sri Ramakrishna is immediately giving a wonderful reply. What is the difference between the worldly and other worldly things? Sri Ramakrishna, this is, while striving for the realization of God, the aspirant has to practice renunciation, applying the logic of neti, neti, not this, not this, not this, not this, but after attaining the vision of God, he realizes that God alone has become all things. So that is called Vijnana, Jnana, Vijnana. So he is not only, he is conscious about the God, he is conscious about each and everything is nothing but God. But it's very, very difficult to, not only to understand, but to accept to. Why even the young Narendra of course he was, I think 18, 19 years old by that time, uh, he could not accept this when Sri Ramakrishna told, you see this temple, this goddess Kali, that cat over there and the lady standing outside, each and everything, all the utensils that are used for puja purpose, worship purposes, that is also nothing but God. So it was very difficult for him to digest, so he came and he was having a nice fun with another gentleman and Pratap Chandra Hasra and he was telling, oh my God, what this man is telling? Even the utensils are also God? You know that wonderful incident that happened that time, Sri Ramakrishna came and touched Swami Vivekananda, Narendra Nath. He didn't touch the other person, Pratap. He only touched Narendra, because though doubt was there, but his mind was pure. And he was not bound by anything. Because of the moment he touched, immediately all transformation. If you read the biography of Swami Vivekananda, three days and three nights, he was in that mood, enjoying the Advaita, 
everywhere nothing but the consciousness. Can you imagine? No one will be able to, even if Sri Ramakrishna comes and gives that knowledge to us, how many of us will be able to understand that, digest that and live with that? It is impossible. So the preparation is necessary. So here Sri Ramakrishna is telling that while striving for the realization of God, aspirant has to practice renunciation. But after the realization, he will see everything is nothing but the same God. Then he is giving the example, uh, butter milk and the butter. He is giving the example how the Ramachandra, he was thinking to renounce the world. Then their family guru, Vashishta, he came and he told, you argue with me where you are going. You are going out, uh, leaving the home, where you are going, in this world? or seclusion, each and everything is nothing but the same God. How it is possible that you will go beyond any place where there is no God? So that is the wonderful idea. And afterwards, that Narendranath who left hearing the words of Sri Ramakrishna and he was commenting, oh, this man has lost the mental balance. He, after the realization, his own realization, he wrote, in everything there is nothing but God. Tujse hamne dil ko lagaya, yo kuch hai, so tu hi hai. I have attained your, my mind with you. And then I see you are, not, everything is nothing but you. Yo kuch hai, so tu hi hai. Narendranath used to sing this song, but he is ne never to accept the meaning of it. Sri Ramakrishna, he told, hey, he used to sing this song and you are not accepting it. So God has become everything. This is the wonderful idea. The conception, there is no difference. Afterwards, when Sister Nibedita, the disciple of Swami Vivekananda, she wrote a wonderful mastery foreword of the God the complete works of Swami Vivekananda. If you read that foreword written by Sister Nivedita, the complete works of Swami Vivekananda, in one place she is mentioning that in him, for to him, the secular and sacred, no difference. Sacred means we sit over here, this is puja and all these things. And secular that I am driving, I am working in the field, or I am doing a business, or this and that, all secular things, not godly things, the worldly things. For him there was no difference. Why? Each and everything is nothing but the manifestation of God. When I am talking with a person, I am talking with God, I am in the presence of God. When I am eating, I am sleeping, I am going, can you imagine? That is called the presence of God in every step. So here Sri Ramakrishna is encouraging. Then he is mentioning what Brahman is cannot be described in words. Why he is talking about the Brahman? Because he is not talking about the God, he is talking about the Brahman and it cannot be described in words Everything has been polluted like food that has touched the tongue. That is, everything has been described in words. But no one has ever been able to describe Brahman. We have read this thing again, in the before also, again and again. He is mentioning this. The Brahman cannot be described. Why? It is beyond the time, space and causation. Whatever we are understanding, we all understand the name and form. Without the name and form and the time, we cannot understand anything. If there is no name, a star or something which we see, if there is no name, we are confused. And that's why immediately after the discovery of a star or something, 
immediately the scientists they give a name a number so that we can remember it and oh watch this is the number we read about that or this is the name we know read about that we know about it or otherwise something which is unknown even sometimes an animal coming over here and we can't understand what is it is it a cat a cat like sometimes it comes so immediately we think oh that is a, a something confusing i don't know that particular animal the feature is known to me but is not the name so i am confused i ask people so then when they give the name oh is it like this okay so the name and form and the time that is in somehow in such a way in our conception we cannot beyond go beyond that and brahman is beyond that so how to describe brahman the all pervading consciousness is the base of the creation is the base of the sustenance is the base of again going back or dissolution so brahman cannot be described he said but the knowledge of brahman cannot be realized if the aspirant is worldly minded just now he was telling everything is nothing but god whatever we see we, we have to be very very careful about this whatever we see is nothing but god but if we are asking or seeking or attached for these worldly things which is philosophically we can say nothing but god but if we are attached to that we cannot go to the source that is the main thing if you have to go back to the source then you have to cut the bond or attraction or attachment or desire of all these things that is a manifestation of the god but that is not god if you read the poems of shami vivekananda there is one poem as a very nicely as in english that poem one lady she was listening to shami ji on the vedanta then afterwards she wrote to shami ji that means everything is god right so we all are god right then like there she wrote that later to shami ji then shami ji told see one gentleman was explaining uh, the ramayana and after the whole description and the uh, the ramayana then one person raised hand and asked who is sita it's like that you are asking this question after listening the whole ramayana who is sita god manifested in a, a, all like this but all are not god this is the important thing now this light it is giving the light but it is not electricity the electricity with the help of the electricity this light is burning giving the light but if we say this is burning because of the electricity that is moving that fan because of the electricity this is creating uh, of the sound that is because of the electricity so all these are electricity is this correct obviously not so that is the reason we have to understand god has created because of the god everything is surviving but they are not god that is the vedanta we will come to that in little little uh, in details so sri ramakrishna is telling but the knowledge of brahman cannot be realized if the aspirant is worldly minded even in the slightest degree he succeeds in acquiring this knowledge only when his mind is totally free from lust and gold otherwise it is impossible 
the last and goal again and again so many times in the gospel every page is almost having these two words the last and goal in the bhagavad gita sri krishna he is mentioning to arjuna kama esha krodha esha these are the two they are the enemies mahashana mahapapna vidyanna iha vairinam vairi means enemy if you like to realize god if you like to realize your own self if you like to know who you are actually then the two things you must be very very careful of this two kama esha krodha esha kama and krodha desire the last and krodha anger because that desire is not fulfilled unfulfilled desire generates anger and sri ramakrishna is telling the same thing in a two different words that is last and gold why gold because without the the gold or the money you cannot satisfy all your desires so he said in this way he is telling in the, that only thing the totally free from that then he is telling addressing mr mukherjee sri ramakrishna said this is very interesting he is telling you are rich but still you call on god this is very good indeed it is said in the gita that those who fall from the path of yoga are born in their next birth as devotees of god in rich families and here mr mukherjee is quoting the line from the bhagavad gita who can quote hmm? or uh, what is called that birbala uh, is not here otherwise we will people have quote so this this is that who, who says that in the yogi when the arjuna was asking this question someone is trying to realize god but unfortunately he could not realize in this very life so naturally he could not enjoy this life and he could not reach to the other life also to god or to heaven so total life is in waste isn't it then sri krishna is telling no is not shuchi naam srimatam gehe yoga prasht vijayate he is born in shuchi and sri sri means those who are having the sufficient uh, money and others so that they can support themselves they need not to go every day out to earn money and that is a very difficult life when they will put their mind in meditation and calling on god so shuchi and sri these are the shuchi means cultured they understand everything and they know that we should not hurt others we should help others we should try to understand others we should learn how to live with others with all the different type of opinions that is culture and sri that is also there suchi naam sri matam ge when sri ramakrishna mentioned then mukherji quoted that particular line then master sri ramakrishna with a smile what's wrong in that now this is the another thing line the god if he so desires can keep a gani in the world too sri ramakrishna is mentioning god if he so desires can keep a gani in the world too now understand that this is the important thing the sri ramakrishna is just mentioning it gani also can stay and can live in the world because as a will of god this moment he is telling this worldly things are all temporary if your mind is there in this world then you will never be able to realize brahman he never said god brahman now in the next he is telling 
But even a gyani, God, sometimes keep the gyanis. Gyanis means those who are realizing Brahman. Those who are realizing bhakta, uh, there's a God, they are bhaktas. Because the goal has been termed, named in different way. The devotees, it is the God. For the gyanis is the Brahman or Atman, Paramatman. So this way it goes. So the gyani also, after this realization of the Brahman, for him this world is nothing, but even then he can live over there. The world and all living beings have been created by his will, H capital, that means the God, but he is self-willed. The God has created it and self-willed out of his own it, the free will. You cannot ask question, why you have created like this? You could make like this, you could make like that. No, it's his free will. The Mukherjee with a smile just is asking this question, how can God have any will? Does he lack anything? Will means Icha, that is the desire. But the God all wills or desires are fulfilled. There is no desire at all in the mind of God. Then how can he have a will? Immediately Sri Ramakrishna's answer is, what wrong in that? Water is water, whether it is still or in waves. So God, when he, it is not acting, or not expressing any will, not creating, is God. But when he it is doing, that is also God. So Sri Ramakrishna's, the way he is giving the examples are so clear. And what is wrong in that? The snake is a snake, whether it is coiled up, motionless, or wriggles along. A man is the same man, whether sitting still or engaged in action, the same man. How can you eliminate from the reality, the universe, and its living being. Now here, Sri Ramakrishna casually, but very carefully mentioning a very difficult philosophical question. So over this, Ramanuja, Shankara, and they all debated, and thousands of pages have been written on this point only. How can you eliminate from the reality, the universe and its living being, if you do that, it will lack its full weight. You cannot find out the total weight of the bell fruit if you eliminate the seeds and the shell. Brahman is unattached. One finds good and bad smell in the air. But the air itself is untainted. Brahman and Shakti are identical. It is the primordial power that has become the world and all living beings. In different words he is mentioning like this, but unless you have the philosophical background, you will never be able to understand this point. Here Sri Ramakrishna, what is wrong in it? is the same man whether sitting or still engaged in action who is as created in the Vedanta philosophy you all know in the Vedanta that is the last part of the Veda that is the knowledge part but in Vedanta again that small word Vedanta there also again the three schools are there three major schools in total there are six schools but major Dvaita, Vishishta Dvaita and Advaita. Dvaita completely, they believe that God is completely different. God has created this universe, including us, and we can in no way reach God. If we are going on praying and trying to please God, then maybe someday he can ask me to go near him, stay near him, and bless me with some other things, 
that much, but I can never become God. That is the idea. And the Semitic religions are also following the same majority of the people. They think in that way because this is very easy to understand and very easy to conceive. There is someone who is creating and someone who is giving the punishment or reward and someone who is looking after all our actions. Very easy to understand. And so the most of the religious religion, they grew up in this Dvaitism. Here we find Sri Ramakrishna is telling like this and Shankaracharya, it became very difficult for him to give the answer how the God has created this universe. You all know those who were attending regularly our philosophical classes that the three answers are to be given. Who is the creator? What is this creation? And what is the relation between the creator and the creation? Now, obviously, oh, God has created it. And don't question. Just ac accept it. Believe it. It's not like that. In the Hinduism, every step, you have the right to ask question. Now, when the people are asking question, if God has created this universe, this whole world, what you see in this world? Everything is dying some day or other. The trees and other animals, the insects, the reptiles, the human being, the birds, each and every creature has a beginning and the end. Does it mean the God also has the beginning and the end? Does God die? So that is the question. So to answer this, Shankaracharya, he is using the word Maya. What is there in the Upanishad? I think Shetashadra Upanishad talk about the Maya. Maya, Vi, Indra, this type of words are there in the Upanishad. So he is using the Maya. What is that Maya? A magical power. The Maya, the word used as a magical power. Here the Shankara is telling, the tremendous power that is there in the God, with that he is creating everything. When you look at the magician, he is mesmerizing thousands of people just in front of him. Alone a person is coming and he is showing his hand, there is nothing. Suddenly out of his palm comes out two pigeons and flying, the living pigeons. How could he do that? The people are appreciating that and when what they see, they see it, but it is so difficult to believe it. Because from the bare hands which nothing was there, suddenly the pigeons are coming, leaving pigeons and flying all around. How it is possible? Has God created this universe like that power? So that is the question. So Maya is considered as the will of God. For God, Maya is only the will to create the appearance. It does not affect God, does not deceive him. As Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna was mentioning, though there may be smell, bad and good smell in the air, but air by any way is not affected by that. It just flow and where there are bad things, it takes the bad smell and goes again the good things, flower garden, the good, uh, good smell. So like that it goes, it is no, non, no way is attached to that. Similarly, God is creating those who see many objects instead of one Brahman or God, for them Maya is an illusion producing out of ignorance called abhidya. Shankara, he is giving this example to justify, to philosophize that you have to give the reply. Everything that we see in the creation is temporary. If it is so, if the, whether the creator is also temporary, like the carpenter and his woodwork, whatever the woodwork that the carpenter does, that also gets destroyed, carpenter also die. Is it like that? 
that there is an end of God, someday God will also die. That is absurd. So obviously from the philosophical point of view, it is completely absurd. So he says like this, those who are seeing many things instead of one, for them, Maya is having two gifts, terrible gifts. One, a jnana with double function. Maya is creating the ajnana, the ignorance, the nescience. And it is having two double action, double functions. What is that? One is concealing the real nature of Brahman. And second, making him appear as the world. This is the perfect answer. So the Vedanta, we follow Advaita Vedanta. In Vedanta three schools, we go for the best one, the Advaita. Though Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is talking like this, everything, but he is an Advaitin. Swami Vivekananda composed that beautiful the hymn about Sri Ramakrishna, Advaya Tatta Samahita Chittam. His mind is full with the knowledge of Advaita, the oneness. And again, Ma Sharadamani Devi, she also said when there was a controversy, Swami Vivekananda, he established an ashrama with the help of his two British devotees, Captain and Mrs. Saviour, a beautiful ashrama in, on the Himalaya. There, in that ashrama, he said, this is for Advaita, those who are capable, they should practice. Mostly the European disciples who were coming to India following Swami Vivekananda, they were not habituated with so many different varieties of gods and goddesses, the idol worship and all that. It was terrible for them. So for them mainly, and also for those who can conceive this idea. One, nothing is there. And that one is within you. And that is your consciousness, that way. The one Brahmachari, it was difficult for him to, he was posted over there. So he was working in Advaita Asama. And he started worshipping the picture of Sri Ramakrishna inside his room, not in a shrine, not publicly. Even then, when Swami Vivekananda was visiting, he entered into that room, saw that picture and said, my God, why you are worshipping here? He didn't say anything to that young brahmachari. He scolded the in charge over there. He told, it is your duty to tell them, to teach them that this is Advaita. Some of them, they were confused. Sri Ramakrishna is Vivekananda's guru. How come that Vivekananda is asking, stopping us to worship him? So they wrote to mother, Ma Sharadamani Devi, who was in relation, was the wife of Sri Ramakrishna. And she was a great devotee. But she wrote, your guru, that is Sri Ramakrishna, is an Advaitin. And you are also Advaita, Advaitin. So this Advaita, here it mentioned, those who are not able to see one for them, the creation is nothing but Maya. And from the st statement like, the, as Sri Ramakrishna is mentioning, how can you eliminate from the reality the universe? So if you do that, you will won't get the total weight. Like the bale fruit that if you like to weight, not only the kernel, but also the shell and the seeds and many other things which you are not going to eat, that you have to weigh. Otherwise, how it is possible? So this way, some people, they think that Sri Ramakrishna is following the path of Ramanuja, the Vishishta Dvaita. Because Ramanuja, he is telling in this way, he is also accepting Maya. He is also using the word Maya to explain the creation. For, for Ramanuja, the Maya is God's wonderful power of real creation. This is the difference. Shankara is appearance. 
Ramanuja, real creation. Both are using the word Maya. One is telling the Maya is Ajnana Avidya. Ramanuja is telling no, is the real power. Maya is eternal, unconscious, primal matter, which is in Brahman and which is in real transformation into the world. So how God is creating this world? Through the Maya. And what is Maya? According to Ramanuja, it is eternal. Even though the things are changing, forms and names are changing, but in reality it is there in different form and different names. And it is unconscious, it is not conscious, and it's the primal matter with which God is creating this universe. This idea is known as Purinama Vada. Purinama. It was the milk before, then it has become the yogurt. Completely changed. That's called Purinama. It is Purinama means the effect. So obviously, you cannot change the yogurt into milk again. That is not possible. Once it has been transformed, the milk has transformed as a yogurt, it is yogurt. Sh Shankar philosophy is also supporting this view. Shankara theory of creation is famous at Vibhartavada. The two words, if you can remember, one is Parinamavada. The God from his power that is Maya, with the help of the Maya, is creating this universe, this world, which is permanent. So Parinama, they are not going back again to the God. But Shankara says, no, it is Bibartabhada. You are creating these from your own mind, just you are superimposing. According to Shankara, Maya is not the permanent character of God, but only a free will which can be given up at will. So God may create, may not create, it can take back the creation also. So it is free will and it can take back at will. Shankara thinks this Maya is abhyakta or the Prakriti. But this Prakriti and Shankar philosophy Prakriti are not the same. So this month uh, we won't be able to meet to discuss about the philosophy because uh, this coming Sunday I will be in Toronto and the next Sunday again we will go for the retreat. So like that. So next time when you will be meeting we will come to the Shankar philosophy, we will be discussing it in, at length of, about this. This is the Prakriti having three elements, Sattva, Raja and Tama. It is a power of God and absolutely dependent on God. So it is the Bibartha, not Purinama. What is this? Suppose I see a snake on a rope. The rope is rope. Only I am thinking that it is a snake. As long as I am thinking that rope as snake, the snake exists. But the moment someone comes with a light and show that, this is a rope, you need not, need not to be afraid of, it is not a snake, snake vanishes. So this is the difference. One is permanent. Ramanuja said when the rope becomes snake, it becomes snake. It will never become rope, Parinamavada. But Shankara says, Vibhartavada, you are concealing and superimposing something else. It was rope all through. Rope never became snake. It is you who close that with your ignorance and superimpose on that snake from your idea because of the, almost the similarity. So it became snake to you, not to all. The one who sees this world is a world to him, not to each and every one. When a small ba little girl is playing with her dolls, the dolls are speaking to her. And she is clearly listening to those 
and the doll is telling I am hungry. So she is arranging, arranging food for the doll and the water for the doll. Can we, the grown up, when we are sitting all around looking at her play, we say it play. She is playing with the dolls, but for her, it's a complete reality. Similarly, when we are looking at this world and thinking that this is real, it is real to you, not to Sri Ramakrishna, not to Jesus, not to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not to Shankaracharya. Why? They are grown-ups. How? By knowledge. So when we are by knowledge grown up, then we can think, oh no, this is not like that. Just now if we say, now as because we are reading the Shankaracharya, I deny this word, that will be, I don't think is real, because that is not originally coming out from your experience, knowledge. That is exactly what Siddhama Krishna will be mentioning. Maya is nothing but lost and gold. That again the, is the uh, coined word. A man attains yoga when he has freed his mind from these two. Now Maya is creating this world. What is that Maya? And according to Swami Sri Ramakrishna, the last and gold. Because the time that he was leaving, people were all the time thinking about the money. Even now, the modern society, always anchoring after money. Knowing that he is going to die someday, even then he will be going on accumulating money in the bank and ultimately he will never give that money to anyone when he dies. Bank people are very happy. Oh, has he passed away? And let his soul go to God or anywhere. We don't want. So, so that way they will be thinking that bank has got that money. He earned, he could not enjoy. He earned, he could not donate. He earned and he suffered. Why? Wrong conception. I am going to love, leave. That is... Sri Ramakrishna is telling, the self, the supreme self is the magnet. Now he is concluding, the individual self is the needle. The individual self experiences the state of yoga when it is attached by the supreme self, attracted by the supreme self to itself. Now this needle is constantly, it is getting the pull from the supreme self. Why you people have come over here today, this evening? Why people are visiting the temple? Why people are reading the philosophy and the scriptural books? Why? Because something within them, they are thinking that something is there which is permanent, which can give me the peace, happiness, joy. And Sri Ramakrishna is telling that is the Supreme Self. Because this thought is coming within your mind, know it for sure, to some extent you are free from the clay which is covering that needle. And that is the reason the needle, though constantly the magnet is drawing towards it, it cannot go. The Sri Ramakrishna is giving the individual self experiences the state of yoga when it is attracted by the supreme self or itself. But the magnet cannot attract the needle if the needle is covered with clay. It can draw the needle only when the clay is removed. The clay must be removed. Then Mukherjee is asking, how can one remove it? So this question and the answer you will again listen. Uh, that is very important question, how to remove the clay. In the next class again we will discuss about it. Let us offer our pranam to this great soul, Sri Ramakrishna. 
the God who manifested in the form of Sri Ramakrishna and gave his everything in the form of knowledge through this book, Panchama Veda. Niranjanam Nityam Anantarupam Bhaktanukampa Dhrita Bigraham Bhai Ishavataram Paramishamidyam Tam Rama Krishnam Shirasana Mamaha O Shanti 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 Hari Hari